Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Ezekiel, a series of visions in which the prophet Ezekiel talks to God. Ezekiel lived in a time called the Babylonian exile, when the kingdom of Judah had been conquered, and the temple in its capital city, Jerusalem, that had been built by Solomon had been destroyed, and many people fled to other countries like Egypt. The book of Ezekiel comes right after the book of Lamentations in our Bible, and Ezekiel's visions are set against a heavy backdrop of lament. I mean, the temple has been destroyed, and there is no longer any place for the people of God to come together to worship. Ezekiel's people have been scattered, with many dead, and many enslaved, and many lost, and many unaccounted for. The land of their ancestors, a very real part of their identity, has been conquered. The situation seems hopeless and desperately lonely. But throughout Ezekiel's visions, God promises him that God is still with them, all of them, no matter where they are, no matter how brokenhearted they are, no matter how bleak their futures may seem. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, oh Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then God said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Well, 
So at the risk of being slightly melodramatic, which I do feel is entirely warranted after having spent two weeks without human contact, we are living in the midst of a new kind of exile. Outside of art history classes, I can't really say that I've really given a lot of thought to the story from Ezekiel before, but it took my breath away when I read it this week as one of the lectionary texts. The whole house of Israel says, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. It could be easy to lose hope as numbers of infections multiply and we are unable to be physically present for each other in community, cut off as we are by social distancing. But at the same time, if we really believe in the resurrection, if we really believe that God can call Lazarus out of the tomb, if we really believe that God can breathe from the four winds and layer sinews and flesh and skin back onto a deep valley's worth of bones, if we really believe that our God is powerful enough to rise again on the third day, then we can't look at death or sickness or fear or societal upheaval as endings without hope. I promise you, there is always hope because our God is powerful beyond our scope of understanding and more loving and more present and more wise than we could imagine. Even in the midst of everything that surrounds us, the breath of God is sweeping through this valley of dry bones, inspiring researchers and caregivers, medical suppliers and leaders of all kinds, artists and musicians, friends and neighbors, people of every nation and creed. The breath of God and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit are rearranging the wilderness into fertile ground and recreating those dry and lonely bones into the foundations of something new and reimagining community in ways we haven't seen before. God asks us, mortal, can these bones live? Ezekiel demurs, but the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, these bones can live, and they will live, and not only will they live, but they will thrive, and they will dance, and they will beat their swords into plowshares, because everything will be made new. I mentioned last week that uh, singing can be a way of praying with our whole bodies, dry bones and all. One old hymn that's really been stuck in my head this week is called The Old Churchyard. And it's really been resonating with me in light of today's readings and with current events in the life of our church. And I wanted to share a couple verses. I know that it's vain when our friends depart to breathe kind words to a broken heart. And I know that the joy of life is marred when we carry our friends to the old churchyard. I shall not weep when it's my time to go to that haven of rest where no tears ever flow. For I fear not to enter that dark, lonely tomb where our Savior did lay, ere he conquered the gloom. I rest in the hope that one bright day, sunshine will burst through these prisons of clay, and St. Gabriel's trumpet and the voice of the Lord will wake up the dead in the old churchyard.